What's good everybody? It's me, your main girl Mel. I'm not a scientist, not yet at least. I am a hair care professional and someone very interested in science, particularly at this current time. I've been very interested in the types of ingredients that are in our products that may or may not be toxic. The safety of our hairs, our scalp, and our very own well-beings have been questioned in light of recent allegations against many hair care companies that are making hairs fall out and causing other severe damages too, which is extremely alarming. So I did some investigating and in my scientific research I have discovered some quite disturbing information that everyone needs to know. Ask yourself, are the products we're using actually safe? Can we rely on apps like Think Dirty and the EWG website to help us protect ourselves from dangerous toxins? Is there more that the cosmetic industry is hiding from us? Well, stay tuned. Now, for some context, in a previous video, I had thoroughly investigated the Diva Curl scandal situation, assessing the allegations and claims that it was causing severe damages to people's hair and scalp. However, it's not just Diva Curl, but many hair care brands that have been accused of causing these serious issues. First of all, with the safety of these products being in question, we wonder who is responsible for substantiating the safety of these cosmetics. So I actually want to ask you, what do you consider safe? Well, let's introduce the no list. As seen on almost every hair care line, there is the no list. The free from, the absolutely no, never has any, zero spoonfuls of. What does it even mean? That's what I started wondering. What does this no list even mean? Does this guarantee that the product that we're using is quality? Because hear me out. There are ingredients on the no list that aren't harmful to us, but they may be placed on the bottles of products just to make it easier for consumers to stay away from the ingredients that they would like to avoid. But they are placed beside a lot of ingredients that are chemicals and unsafe, which side by side kind of makes it look like they're all on the same plane, but that's not really the case. For example, things like sulfates and silicones, they're not actually harmful to us. But again, they're placed beside a ton of ingredients that do sound really scary. A lot of the times we don't actually know what they mean. And a lot of the times they're ingredients that would never even be in the product. What product has this? For many people that are ingredient conscious, seeing that extensive no list kind of calms the mind, especially when there are so many people afraid of chemicals. Because chemicals sound scary. It gets very technical, very nitty gritty and scientific, and it's hard to trust what we don't understand. But chemistry is in us and all around us. But so is the fear of the unknown and the mistrust of the misunderstood. So we see comfort in natural products. And especially when we see that extensive no list because it helps to ensure us that the products we're using are clean and non-toxic. I mean, that's part of the reason why people put their money and their trust into a brand like Diva Curl. Except now that there are thousands of stories of people claiming that these products are in fact unsafe to use due to all the adverse effects that are happening on their hairs and scalps, now even more people are becoming ingredient conscious and they're looking into the products that they have, analyzing the ingredient list, which is really hard to do unless you're a chemist. We simply just don't understand what the things that are in there are doing. That is unless we research it. Now is everyone turning over the back of the bottle and researching each and every ingredient that is in their product? Probably not. It's very time consuming to do your own research. But luckily, there's an app for that. Like the Think Dirty app. So I have been referred to using this app so much since the Diva Curl outbreak. I'm seeing it mentioned all over YouTube and Instagram and so it's clearly accumulating a lot of buzz and it's becoming a new resource for a lot of people, especially people that wish to stay clean and not dirty. Now on this app, these products are rated from 0 to 10, 10 being highly toxic. Now shockingly, Diva Curl is rated highly toxic and amongst many other hair care lines that are also very popular. What's great about the app is you can further expand to look at which specific ingredients are in the products that should be avoided. Fragrances are some of the most vilified ingredients on the app, 
and can solely give a product a highly dirty rating. Possible allergic reactions. Possible carcinogen. Now, the more you explore this app, the more and more you realize that every single product that you have is toxic. To me, this all seemed like way too much. So I did some digging. Consumers don't trust the cosmetic industry anymore and are scared to use all of the products that they have, all thanks to the Think Dirty app, informing the public of what's toxic and what's not. So now we want solutions, which means new products, right? Exactly. And what's great is all the options are directly on the app. All the non-toxic brands that are available are organic, they're natural, and they're pricey. So it's like, spend an arm and a leg or give up your arm, your legs, and your life. Sorry, that was dark, but it gets even darker. The bias on these apps is very clear. They clearly favor natural products, which are on par with the selling point that natural is better, green is clean, and toxins are dirty. The fragrances that are so vilified on some products are not nearly as penalized on their natural products that they are endorsing. Fragrance ingredients are labeled non-toxic perfumes and fragrances as long as it's claimed natural. That makes it non-toxic? The narrative is inconsistent and they don't have enough data to even support their claims. Conveniently, natural products that fit their story and have a zero rating have not been reviewed as strictly. There is like no large company that is actually putting formaldehyde in their products. Instead, some preservatives being used are formaldehyde donors. Now, according to safety tested journals, there is no indication that the use of, for example, diazolindinol, diazolindinol, I don't know how to say it, urea, this, this preservative, for example. There is no indication that the use of diazolindinol urea as used in cosmetic products would release formaldehyde at concentrations which would exceed the limits recommended for formaldehyde. You know, this ingredient is in a lot of products and for a good cause, you know, it's preserving. We need preservatives in our products. And there is no evidence that proves that formaldehyde donors in cosmetics cause cancer. So how can they say that? Where are they getting their information from? The EWG cannot guarantee the accuracy of the information provided or any analysis-based theorem. Our ratings are determined based on publicly available data released by non-profit and government agencies. Think Dirty, the EWG, and the Campaign for Safe Cosmetics, they are simply NGOs or non-governmental organizations. They do not make assessments of ingredients based off of what toxicologists say, are not science-based organizations. Information is not consistently available, relevant, or even accurate. Some of their sources are so outdated they can't even be searched. So what is this based on? It seems these apps are based on pseudoscience. Now, pseudoscience consists of beliefs, statements, and practices that are claimed to be both scientific and factual, but they don't actually add up. They are incompatible with the scientific method. So can we really trust what they're saying? Are these apps reliable? Or are they selling you what they want you to believe? They want to inform you of and sell you safe, clean cosmetics. But it'll also show you which products are not toxic and send you straight to an affiliate link, which they profit off of. Why would they want to sell toxic products when they're encouraging clean beauty? Profits. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with affiliate programs. On this channel, we use a lot of affiliate programs. It's the way that you guys get to support us creators. But the difference is apps like these are benefiting off of consumers by spreading fear and misinformation. And it's working. They're making a lot of money off of it. So are these apps really reliable? I want to believe that they have good intentions. This has become a primary resource for consumers that are genuinely afraid of the products they are using and looking for safer alternatives. 
Now, would you believe me if I told you that cosmetic products are some of the safest consumer products that we can buy? Well, straight from the FDA, companies and individuals who manufacture or market cosmetics have a legal responsibility to ensure the safety of their products. What does a brand get out of poisoning their products? Besides bad publicity and lawsuits. Companies do not profit off of selling crap products. I mean, maybe some products out there are crap and ineffective, but are they unsafe? The formulation of cosmetic products is carried out by highly qualified scientists. To put out a product, it takes several years, a lot of scientists, a lot of testing before they can ever market anything. Now, according to the CTPA, which is the Cosmetic, Toiletry, and Perfumery Association, and I quote, as far as human safety is concerned, it makes no difference whether a chemical is natural, organic, or man-made, synthetic. The body really cannot tell the source of an ingredient. All ingredients must be safe to use, as must be the final cosmetic product. People can do whatever they want. People can use the Think Dirty app. People can, can shop at the drugstore. People can use dirt. I wouldn't, I really, you shouldn't. I, what are you gonna use that? You can put food on your hair and your face. We're free to do whatever we want. What's important is that we're making informed decisions and not being misled by fear mongering companies. But if you want a more reliable database, one that is actually created by toxicologists and other people of science, then consider looking at the Cosmetic Ingredient Review website I will link below. On this website, you can look up any ingredient like formaldehyde donor preservatives, and you can see exactly what evidence of safety has been collected, again, by real toxicologists. Another resource you can check out is the Cosmetic Ingredient Database, created by the EU. So there are lots of actual reliable sources that we can learn from and use, which is great. But unfortunately, there are so many consumers that have already been fed so much misinformation that I'm worried it's too late. This is why it's very important to share with a friend. Um, but for real, many of us have fallen prey to fear marketing. Like the marketing of clean beauty companies is very dramatic and it insinuates that all other products are dirty and not to be trusted. Clean beauty relies on finding a villain like toxins and holding it responsible for everything you don't like about yourself or your health. It doesn't make clean beauty bad, but it doesn't mean these other products are bad either. There's always going to be people that believe that natural nature is better and that Everything that is man-made and synthetic is bad. And all these victims that have gone through these struggles with Diva Curl, again, these things happened, and not taking anyone's sides here, not discrediting anyone, but, but with everything that just went down in the curly community, there's gonna be a lot of people that believe that corporations and companies like Diva Curl are evil and out to poison the population, while also making money off of their victims. Although there are definitely some corporations that have done this, like the tobacco industry, we can't say that all corporations do this because remember, it is illegal for them to do so. I really just wanted to make this video to inform people of what is going on behind the scenes. The more information we have, the better decisions we can make and really question who can we trust. I personally trust in science. I believe that the cosmetic industry and hair care brands genuinely want us to succeed and that cosmetic products are safe. But all we can do is our own research, hopefully from reliable sources, not to be tricked into believing the pseudoscience. As all moms say, make good choices. And as I say at the end of every video, thanks for tuning in. Share this video with a friend, like it if you liked it. And I'm here for you each and every Texture Tuesday. So I will see you guys next week with a brand new video. I want all this drama to settle down. I want to go back to making fun, educational hair content while also bringing the nitty gritty scientific and entertainingly educating. Anywho, peace. The rabbit hole goes deep. Science rules. This has become a primary source. This has become a primary resources.
this has become a primary this has become a primary primary get an Italian spring roll I'm telling you do I look cute? But should I put the blouse on? I might put the blouse on for dinner. Sorry, think dirty. Don't sue me. I don't think you can. I hope not. Nah. I'll just take down the video if anything, but at least there will be enough people that have seen it and they know the truth. This lighting really sucks without these things. Yay, new lighting! Bye, everybody.